papers. No one was being paid for this. It was all done voluntarily. And I think there was a sense in Pittsburgh that they were on the cusp of history. Well, they had us lined up and they called the name and then they said it to you and you were supposed to verify it. And then we were called into the area behind the screen and given a little stife bear to hold on to while we got the shot. The needle was very long and very thick looking and basically fearsome. My brother, Tommy, uh, he hated it. He would try to corner him and he'd run under tables and under chairs screaming, screaming his head off. And he didn't care about the cookies and the orange juice. He just didn't want to get a shot. Not all parents found it easy to place their trust in the new vaccine. Sid said he was glad that our kids could participate in the vaccine trials. I was a nervous wreck, frankly. I was scared to take them and scared not to take them. So I had to take them. But, you know, we weren't sure what this whole thing was an experiment at that point, the vaccine. The stakes were high for everyone, but especially for Jonas Salk. I think with my father, there were two parallel things going on. Complete and absolute confidence in what he was doing. I don't think there was a doubt in his mind. And yet at the same time, there's always doubt. There's always question, is it gonna work? Jonas Salk, for all of his self-confidence, cannot possibly say that there is no chance of a kid getting polio from my vaccine. Vaccines are always a matter of risk versus reward, and nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. These were his neighbor's children. He was sticking with this dead virus. That's not like inoculating someone in another continent. It was very real. There were children who played Little League with his sons. There were, you know, there were children whose parents he saw walking in the streets of Squirrel Hill or in Oakland, who worked at the university. So if he had, had harmed them, he would have been in a very, very difficult situation. The Pittsburgh trials were soon declared a success. Fears about the vaccine's safety were diminishing, but one critical step remained. In April 1954, a final large-scale trial began across 44 states with a single vaccine. The March of Dimes, who were funding the trial, decided it would be run by an independent panel from the University of Michigan. But everyone knew this was Jonas Salk's vaccine. He was becoming a household name. In April 1954, field trials of the Salk polio vaccine begin in dozens of selected communities throughout America. In the largest such test ever conducted, 1,800,000 children volunteered to participate. The vaccine, which has obsessed Jonas Salk for years, now begins to pass out of his hands. The trial got national press, and again, the critics followed. It's time, America. Time for Walter Winchell, the man who gives America the news. On the eve of the field trials, Walter Winchell opened up his broadcast. Mothers and fathers of America, they're preparing coffins for your children because they're going to be doing this experiment on them and some of your children are going to die. Walter Winchell was a, a yellow journalist of his time. He believed, as he said, that the way to become famous is to throw a brick at people that are famous. And that's what he did to Jonas Salk. Salk himself went on air to confront his critics. Studies that my associates and I have been doing at the University of Pittsburgh have indicated clearly that it is possible to induce antibody formation in children uh, by suitable injections with a kill virus vaccine. Uh, more than that, uh, it appears uh, that uh, there are no harmful ill effects accompanying these inoculations. That didn't hurt, did it? Okay. O'Connor said, 
you have to do this. In order to get your vaccine done, Jonas, there are certain things you need to do. And again, he was able and willing to do the necessary things to get things done, even if it wasn't exactly in his line of work. The press was one thing, but Salk was more disturbed by two decisions the panel made about the trial. He had labored for years to get the vaccine right, but at the last minute, the panel changed the formula. When the field trial was being planned, it was decided that it was going to be necessary to add methylate, a preservative, to the vaccine. Whereas my father knew the polio vaccine was going to work, I don't know how confident he was that this large-scale field trial was going to come out with the results he had anticipated. My father was deeply concerned. Salk feared that, that that preservative would actually damage the vaccine viruses and render them less effective. And that really upset Salk. He took this seriously. I mean, it was called the Salk vaccine. The second decision that upset Salk was that the trial would be placebo controlled. This meant that half the test subjects would get the vaccine and half would receive an inactive substance or placebo. Salk understood that the placebo group would provide valuable data, but it also raised a troubling ethical issue. He thought it was morally reprehensible to give some kids the vaccine and knowingly withhold it from some others. He knew that this vaccine was going to work and went against his nature to be allowing kids to go unimmunized that otherwise would be able to get vaccine. Fortunately, wiser heads prevailed, and where he was being so guided by his heart was able to be counterbalanced, and the field trial was indeed structured as a placebo-controlled trial. This was the only way to test the vaccine for safety and effectiveness, both of which needed to be established. The fact that he did agree to a placebo-controlled trial was a major, major plus in the evaluation. And that has become the gold standard for testing vaccines, both for effectiveness and safety. Salk agreed to the placebo group, but never agreed to the addition of the preservative. And now, almost two million children were about to put their health in Salk's hands. Despite his concerns, Salk didn't even have the comfort of being able to monitor the trial's progress. He was kept completely in the dark, forced to endure the suspense along with the rest of the country. It takes a full year for the results to be analyzed. Everybody's nervous. Jonas Salk is confident, but doesn't know. No one tells him. This is Tuesday, April 12th. 1955, a day which may well mark the most significant event in all of medical history. The world will very soon know whether the battle against the disease that has twisted hundreds of thousands of young bodies has been won. Success or failure, whatever happened here would make headlines. Along with Jonas Salk, his wife and three sons, the world held its breath. Results from the observed study areas are employed. The vaccine could be considered 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. The vaccine worked. It was both safe and effective. It was a defining moment, the beginning of the end of the disease. The good news spread like wildfire. The guy gets off the elevator and he hits the, the runway. He never got into the room. Everybody is yelling, give me one. The fellow from the university service stands up on this table. He's just throwing them. It works, it works, they were yelling. 
There were newspaper reporters that ran to telephones to quickly get this as a front page headline on probably every newspaper in this country. This was his moment. It was a mob scene in Ann Arbor. I can remember that day so well. Television sets were set up in our school. Kids ran out into the streets. School was called. You know, factory whistles went off, church bells tolled, people were crying. It was, it was in, a, in a way as if a war had ended, and in a way a war had ended. It was like, it was like something just being lifted, like just thought, oh, you know, my God, I just can't believe it. It's over. I mean, it's over for millions and millions of children. And movie office began to come in. Three studios were very interested, and the rumors that Marlon Brando was going to play Jonas Salk. He had a you know a lot of self confidence, so he always thought he would succeed, uh, even though the amount we understood about vaccinology back then was way, way less uh, than we do today, and. You know, it was great when the trial succeeded. When the vaccine was declared safe, potent, and effective, that Jonas Salk became a national hero. You know, he was on the cover of Time. Newsweek called him one of the greatest Americans. He got the Congressional Medal of Freedom. President Eisenhower invited him to the White House. He said, I, I just don't have the words to thank you. Ike was a grandfather. Dr. Salk, before I hand you this citation, I have no words in which adequately to express the thanks of myself, all the people I know, and all 164 million Americans to say nothing of all the other people in the world that will profit from your discovery. I am very, very happy to end that. This is a, a sign of how great medicine is, and particularly how great American medicine is at this time. It is an, an extraordinarily wonderful, optimistic moment. Okay, and there is reason to be proud. It was an absolutely extraordinary moment in time, and there were so many streams that fed into this. I think it really has to be remembered. This wasn't the work of one person. Everyone else in the laboratory, Dr. Youngner, Jim Lewis, Byron Bennett, Val Baisley, these people were, were remarkable in terms of their their flexibility, their dedication, um, their willingness just to roll up their sleeves, plunge in, do whatever was necessary to get this done. When the vaccine became successful, Salk did what the best scientists do and what the most moral of them do, and what the most humanitarian of them do. And he said, this is a vaccine for the people. You know, this is not a vaccine for my personal profit. And he made the famous statement, you can't patent the sun. The sun is for the people. This vaccine is science's gift to the people. It was an extraordinary act. The race between Salk and Sabin was over. Salk was the first to mark it. It would take Sabin another seven years to complete his version of the vaccine. Well, it's certainly a huge milestone in human health because the idea of mass vaccination campaigns and the ability to create new vaccines, you know, that's the iconic incident. Um, and Salk himself became, you know, this very famous person. It was a huge achievement. Sabin also declined to patent his vaccine. Both vaccines spread around the world, and both have been in continuous use since the time of their creation. Today, we are close to realizing Salk's ultimate dream, total elimination of polio from the globe. <laughs>